What is up y'all, RJ here with CV Tech and I'm back in front of the camera and uh, finally, uh, it's been a little while, uh, but today I want to do a little bit of a retro review or a kind of a throwback video uh, since today's Thursday. I kind of wanted to do this video here. Just go back in time a few years and look at the HTC EVO 4G, the original EVO that was released by Sprint. Um, great little phone for its time, uh, still works, still functions, and uh, I'm going to go over some things with you. I'm going to go over some of the specs and just show you how the phone looks and how it operates now uh, compared to how it operated back in the day around, what, 2010, 2011, whenever this phone was like the phone to have. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and do a look over at the HTC Evo 4G. Okay, y'all, so this is the HTC Evo 4G. Now, this was the big boy on Sprint uh, back in 2010 when it was actually released. And uh, I've had mine since around 2011, I do believe. And uh, you see it has has a few, you know, it looks pretty good except for up here where some of this flat black look here has kind of came off and it makes it look shiny up underneath it. And on the front screen here, you'll see that it has suffered some scratches. And up here's a very small hairline crack that really don't really don't hurt anything. Uh, but it has, has got some scratches on it. And it, it is a little beat up here and there, but it was used like crazy. Now it has the same factory battery that it came with. And I actually gave it a factory reset to see if it would make it any faster than what it was when I first started uh, using it for this video. And uh, I want to give you some specs. Uh, just a, a look back at some specs from 2010. Uh, I mean, I remember sitting, you know, watching TV. And, I mean, this thing was like the big thing that was coming out. I mean, it was like HTC Evo, you know, with WiMAX and all this 4G. And this little kickstand was pretty cool as well if you wanted to you know, have it sit up here and watch TV. And it actually, you know... A little wobbly if you hit it, whatever. If you hit it hard enough, it'd fall over. But for the most part, it was really nice to have that little kickstand. So while I'm sitting here reading a little bit of specs here, uh, let's kind of go back a little bit and just remember, you know, the awesomeness of the HTC Evo 4G and how fast this phone actually was when it first came out. Now, this phone came out June release date of June 4th of 2010. I bought it in 2011. Um, sometime towards, I think, the end of 2011. Got it for free, actually on contract upgrade at Best Buy. So that was a really good deal. Now, this phone runs Android 2.3.5. And that's as far as it got, of course. And um, so, of course, that's gingerbread. So a lot of stuff is just not compatible with this phone anymore. Now, this phone has a 4 0.3 inch display which was really nice and really big for uh, 2010 uh, was 480 by 800 resolution 217 pixels per inch it was a TFT display and it had scratch resistant glass uh, not sure how scratch resistant because you see there's a lot of scratches on that glass now this phone also had an 8 megapixel camera on the rear with a dual LED flash had autofocus, recorded in 720p was max resolution, and uh, has a 1.3 megapixel camera on the front. Now this phone sported a 1 gigahertz single core Snapdragon S1 Scorpion processor. Uh, <laughs> Uh, now, looking at today and what we have today, looking at a 1 gigahertz single core Snapdragon S1 with an Adreno 200 GPU with a half a gigabyte of RAM and 1 gigabyte of ROM. Um, I'm not really sure. I think it had around four to 500 megabytes available storage, but it did have an SD card expansion up to 32 gigs. Had a 1500 milliamp hour replaceable battery with around six hours of talk time. It had an FM radio, and this thing only had WiMAX. And uh, I did 
I, you know, I do live in an area that had WiMAX whenever this phone was available. It's a very limited WiMAX, but at least it had it. But it was very, um, I, I would say that it was, you know, between, you know, from what I can remember, around four to five megabits download. What you would get on WiMAX is what I can remember. I may be wrong, but you know, uh, it's been a long time ago since this phone has been used on WiMAX. Uh, I had Bluetooth 2.1, and um, that's about it. And the MSR price, when it, I guess when it was, when it was released, was around two hundred dollars. So this was kind of you know Sprint's little flagship here back in twenty ten, and um, I mean it had a really uh, nice uh, go. Uh, now the phone is on, got it fully charged up, and as you see, there it is. Uh, I'm gonna actually go into the menu here to this to the display. And I'm going to tone it down a little bit. Uh, let's go to brightness. And turn automatic brightness off. And kind of just, there we go. It looks a lot better. Had a notification light. That was up here in the uh, ear speaker grill up there. Uh, which is really nice. The bottom buttons don't seem to light up. Uh, this phone just is really choppy. I mean, you can expect it to be choppy. Uh, nothing very spectacular. Now... I have filled up the storage. Now I'll go in here to menu and the settings and I will go and look at the SD and phone storage and I have 61 megabytes available space and all I downloaded was Instagram. Uh, Facebook was already installed. Uh, it wouldn't even update because there was just no storage. YouTube, I was able to update. Uh, installed these apps Netflix, eBay, CPUZ, all in one toolbox, Scanner Radio, Twitter, and Zedge. And that's all it's able to download. Um, I couldn't do anything else. Um, a lot of the games that I play, um, Snapchat won't work. Of course, Periscope don't work. Um, a lot of these. Uh, even Creator Studio for YouTube will not work, will not download on this phone. Uh, so there's not a whole lot that you can really do uh, now with this phone that is this old. Your drop down, uh, there was the uh, boot up, boot speed up time, had to clear it up there. But there's nothing up there that you can do. You swipe over here, had your toggles for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, and there was your toggle for 4G. You could toggle it on, toggle it off. Uh, looking at CPU-Z here, I didn't give you the specs, but just kind of just showing you a few things here. Like I said, it was a Scorpion Snapdragon S1, um, and there is some of that device. Uh, it had the supersonic board, whatever that really means. I don't have no idea. Uh, internal storage was 0.42 gigabytes. Uh, so, yeah, around 420 megabytes is really all it had. Uh, and CPU-Z force closed which a lot of apps has done uh, and available storage is like I said, 61 uh, megabytes. Uh, so of course, 2.3.5 is the Android version battery, 93%. I just cut it on from a full charge, not doing anything with it. So, you know, the battery is going bad, but it keeps force closing. So yeah. So looking here, here is your app drawer um it, the phone is still really nice to use i mean it still works got your flashlight here which is really nice with the dual tone and everything uh you could make it brighter which is really nice this is a really good flashlight as well i got your gallery got your gmail uh, fm radio footprints whatever that really is your maps uh, this was just, you know, a really nice little phone and there was not a, there's not a whole lot to, you know, that it goes along with it. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. Got your phone here with your dialer. Uh, you could drop that down, drop it up and everything else, make phone calls. Uh, so your call history, people, phone settings, speed dial, all that stuff. Uh, messages. I couldn't even, I could not even, uh, download Gboard. Because it would not, we don't support it. <laughs> uh, but there is the keyboard that it comes with. And uh, so, yeah, there you go. Pretty nice keyboard, pretty accurate from what I could see. Um, 
like and there's your screen button there of course it had five uh or seven home screens so let's go back in here and uh, just look at a few more things there's not a whole lot really else to look at you have wireless and networks um you have sprint hotspot turn on 4g vpn set and of course you have bluetooth and all that stuff I uh, couldn't really download any games to try any games out because, of course, like I said, it will not hold the storage for one thing. And another thing is that um, <laughs> it would take forever to load up. Um, but that's just a quick look here. Look back at the HTC Evo 4G. Uh, still works really good. Uh, of course, here is your add to home widgets, app, shortcuts, and folders. Uh, let's go into the camera for a quick minute. Um, now, of course, the camera, you had to insert an SD card, or so, so it said earlier. Here's a little drop down. Uh, it, it got brighter, so I apologize if you can't really, if you can't really see the screen. Uh, but down here in the settings, uh, you had 8 megapixel camera, like I may mention, down, down to a small 1 megapixel, 35 and all that stuff. Uh, widescreen, quality high, self-timer auto enhance all that kind of stuff uh let's go around here to let's go, to, let's go down to video and as you see it records in 720p wvga vga cif and q qvga had this little paintbrush here to kind of just change some things around um i'm trying to figure out how to go to the front facing camera uh, and I don't see it on here. I don't know uh, really where it's at. <laughs> There's not nothing on here to tell me uh, how to flip the camera around to the front. So, uh, yeah, I mean, here is my iPhone uh, SE or 5S, my mistake. And so let's take, let's take a quick picture here. Uh, got to try the SD card, um, but the camera wasn't too bad uh, on this device. It is what it is. But uh, anyway, uh, before I keep this any, make this any longer, I wanted to just kind of show you a little retro review of the HTC uh, Evo 4G. Uh, this phone was a boss back in the day. It was awesome. It's super thick. It's very heavy. Uh, but the phone was just very solid built, and back in this day, it was superior in my opinion. So hit that like button if you enjoyed this little throwback video. If you have one of these and or whatever your experience with it, leave it down in the comment section below. And I'll get back with you with your comments and questions. If you ain't subscribed yet? Hit that subscribe button. I sure would appreciate it. Y'all have a good one, and stay tuned for the next video.